Hi guys, how's it going? My name's Helena. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be giving a complete beginner level tutorial on Photoshop for editing astrophotography. Processing astrophotography is arguably the most important part of this hobby, but also the most difficult. So this tutorial should cover everything that you need to know in Photoshop to get started and you need no prior knowledge of Photoshop whatsoever. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to take a photo of the Veil Nebula and take it from something a little bit like this to something that looks a little bit like this. And the best part about this tutorial is that you can edit along with me with the free download link in the description. Simply click on the link and download the data and follow the steps in the tutorial with the exact data that I'm using. One more thing really quickly before we get started, if you'd like to help the channel and contribute towards making more videos like this, getting access to more of my raw data as well as being able to decide what videos I produce, head on over to my Patreon down below, tiers start from just £1 a month and I really appreciate any support. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and I'm going to be editing regular colour data today as it is similar to the result that you'd get out of a DSLR camera or a one-shot colour camera. And this way you can hopefully apply all of my workflow to your own data sets. As you can see, I've got all three files open already, the full Veil Nebula TIFF, the Starless Image and the Star Mask, all of which you can download with the link in the description below to follow along. However, we can totally ignore the Starless Image and the Star Mask for now. Throughout this, we're going to be using a non-destructive Photoshop workflow through layers, which basically means that if you want to change anything or go back on something that you've done to the image, you can do so without affecting any other areas of the image through your layers panel. So we're going to start this off and I am going to name this layer curves as that's what we're going to be doing just now. Firstly, before we begin curves, I'm going to come up to image mode and I'm going to change the image to a 16-bit image. I'm going to click Don't Merge. The reason we want to change it to a 16-bit image is it means that you don't lose any image detail or colour depth through any of Photoshop's compressors. The next thing we're going to do is start our curves. So we're going to come up to Image, Adjustments and Curves. Curves is all about making the data that's hidden behind this image visible through a method called stretching. You do have to be careful with stretching, however, as you can overstretch an image and this can blow out any highlights and therefore you can lose detail in the photo. So we're going to safely stretch this image in this tutorial today. To do this, we're going to come across to this graph here and I normally like to start about two thirds up the line. Simply click until the cross appears and drag up. So how can we tell if we're blowing out the highlights in a photo? The top of this graph coming down should always be in a downward spiral. You never want this section of the graph or any of the graph for that matter to be hitting the roof as I like to call it, to be hitting the top of the graph as that's going to cause detail to be blown out. I'm happy with that, I'm going to click OK. And if you'd like to see exactly the change that that action has made to the previous step, you can simply click back a step in the history panel before and after, before and after. And I'm going to repeat this step a couple of times until I'm happy with the amount of detail shown. So I've finished that curves section of my process for now. So I'm going to drag this layer down onto the plus sign. It's going to be called curves copy, but I'm going to rename it the next action, which is going to be color balance. This way that if I've done anything in the colour balance tab and I decide that I want to go back on my curves and redo my curves, I can click on this layer without affecting anything above it. You can see over this image that it certainly does need a colour balance. It's got a greeny blue colour cast straight over it and that can luckily be easily fixed. To do this, we need to place colour sample tools on the lightest point of the image and the darkest point of the image. Photoshop will read these and then come up with readings for each individual colour channel, red, green and blue, and we can adjust each individual colour channel accordingly to make them even and to create a nice even black background. So if we come over to here and right click, we can find the colour sample tool 
and I am going to find a patch of sky which I think is the darkest. It doesn't have to be the darkest, but as close as you can get, this area doesn't seem to have any stars in it. So I'm going to click there for my dark point and do exactly the same on a star, preferably for your white point. You can now see that numbers have appeared in this info panel and ideally for a fully correctly balanced image, you want R, G and B, all of these numbers to be exactly the same. So we're going to get as close to that as we possibly can. It's okay if we don't get there on the first time around. To do this, we want to come up to image adjustments and levels. Through using levels, we can individually adjust the red, green and blue channels separately. The red channels at five, that's really, really low. And I don't want to adjust that as I risk losing data. So I'm going to go straight to the green channel and I'm going to bring it up slightly. So I want to get 28 as close to five as I possibly can. So I've got to eight. That's super. That's really close. Why have I stopped here? We don't want this arrow to ever go past the main chunk of data as again, you risk losing data and clipping what you already have. So I'm going to stop there for now. And to push this level along, what we need to do is another curves adjustment, but I can do that at any point and come back and adjust the levels afterwards. So now I'm going to come straight down to the blue channel and do the same. Blue's a lot higher up, it's at 40, but I'm going to get it to close as eight and five as I possibly can. 15, that's really, really not bad. But again, I don't want it to go past this chunk of data, so I'm going to leave it there. Otherwise, it becomes destructive. So I'm going to click OK. Again, I'm moving on to another action, so I'm going to duplicate this layer. And I'm going to call this single curve. And I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to come up to image adjustments and make a single curves adjustment. And you can see that a lot of the Veil Nebula is starting to appear now. And I can click OK on that, no problem. I'm going to duplicate this layer again and call it single level. And I'm going to come back up to levels and do exactly what we were talking about before and try and get this blue level a little bit closer to 15 and 10 because you can see that the image is very blue at the minute. So I'm going to come into the single blue channel and you can see there's a bit of space for me to work with. I'm going to move it down and I'm going to eyeball it like that. Again, I don't want to risk clipping it. 18 is absolutely fine. I'm going to click OK. Now, a lot of other tutorials will make sure that these are dead on first time, but I actually find it easier once I've separated the nebulae from the stars to properly color balance the background and also color balance the stars a little bit as well. As you can see that the stars have definitely got a green cast over them. So now we're going to work with the stars and the nebulae separately to fix this problem. At this point in the video, please feel free if you have any sort of star removal software such as Starnet or Starnet version 2 in Photoshop or PixInsight to use it yourself and remove the stars from the image that you've edited but I've also provided the starless image if you'd prefer to just use that one yourself. Okay, so I'm going to move from the Veil Nebula image now to the same image without stars, the starless version. And we're going to work with the same principles as before, the non-destructive process and workflow. I'm going to unlock this layer and I'm going to call it Curves. As you can see, the background is quite black. It's not clipping but I never like to make my backgrounds extremely dark as it can hide some detail. So I'm just going to do a little curves here. Like so, very slight, but noticeable. And I'm going to duplicate that layer like so. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go into Camera Raw. So I'm just going to create a layer for that. So up to filter and into the camera raw filter. And we're just going to make a couple of small but quite important adjustments. If we zoom in or you zoom in on the download, you'll see that there is a little bit of color noise appearing here. 
So if we go into the details tab in Photoshop Camera Raw, we can slide up the color noise reduction and we can see that that all disappears really, really nicely. I'm going to zoom out again and click OK. I'm going to create a new layer and we're going to go back to Camera Raw, but I'm going to call it Camera Raw 2. The reason I'm making a separate layer for two different Camera Raw adjustments is simply that they're two different adjustments and I might want to change them and go back later. So up to filter, into camera raw again. And this time we're gonna adjust the saturation of the veil nebula without adjusting the saturation of the background and revealing any unnecessary noise. Now, a lot of people like to do this through processes such as masking, select and mask in Photoshop is really popular, but I love this method. It is a little bit controversial, but it is quite simple and I love teaching it for beginners. So we can go into the side panel here and right click the brush and we can carefully brush over the nebulae. You can see the part that it's selecting really nicely as it highlights it and makes the rest black and white. And I'm carefully going to brush over just the main parts of the veil nebula. Now I can come down the menu here to the main adjustments and I can up the saturation a little bit. And you can see even just slightly that does make a difference and it certainly separates it from the background. I also love to come into the hue panel a little bit and mess around with the colours. More often than not I do actually keep the objects that I shoot the same as the actual RGB colour in. But I love to mess around and be creative and never be afraid to show that side in this hobby. It is not scientific research and it can be as creative as you want it to be. So I like to mess around with this hue slider and see what I can come up with. Even just slightly there, it's only plus 5.2, but I'm really loving the pinks that are coming through, through the reds, and I'm just gonna up the saturation a little bit more. That's looking really good to me. If I was wanting to make it a little bit more on the pink side and less on the blue side, I could even change the colour balance as well. So I'm going to actually up the pinks because I quite like that look and up the warmth slightly too. And then I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to go across to the star mask layer now. As we zoom in here, we can see the stars appear in a sort of a greeny blue colour, which I'm not a massive fan of. I found that stars were prone to appearing like this with the ASI 294 colour camera as it was quite prone to colour fringing. Fortunately, this is really easy to fix. I can come back into Filter and Camera Raw, but before we do that, I'm going to come down here and call this Camera Raw. Filter, Camera Raw Filter. I'm going to go into the Optics panel this time, and I'm going to zoom in. The majority of the stars are definitely a greeny blue tint, so I'm going to move it up to about 52 out of 84 and increase the amount of green that it's taken away. And you can see that it's immediately taken away. It doesn't need a lot of adjustment and you don't need to overdo it at all. So I'm sticking with five. That's brilliant. I'm going to click OK. And that's me done on the stars. And we can click back and forth to see what a massive difference that's made. Now we've edited the stars and the nebulae separately, we need to be able to compile them back together. So all we need to do on the stars layer is select all, and that selects the whole canvas. Edit, copy, and we can come over to the starless image, create a new layer, of course, and I'm gonna call it combine and then edit, paste. Now, in order to be able to see the nebula through these stars, we have to change the blending mode of the layer. So we come down to normal, click, and we need to click on screen. And now the stars and the nebulae are back together. I'm gonna right click this and scroll down to merge down to combine it with the combine layer. And I'm going to create one more layer as there's one more thing that I'd like to do to this image. 
This next step is quite subjective, although to be honest, the whole tutorial is really subjective and everyone edits their images differently. This is just more of a guide for you to go off and then create your own process and workflow. One of the last things I like to do in my process and workflow is minimize the stars, as although they do look really nice in this image, I like to make the nebula pop that little bit more. So I'm gonna come up to select. Oh, hold on, I really need to start listening to myself. I need to rename this layer. I'm gonna call it star reduction. And then I'm going to come up to select and color range. And we need to make sure our highlights is automatically selected. I like to bring the fuzziness down to about 12, 13. And I normally typically set the range 100, at 180. And then I'm going to click OK. And you can see that that's nicely selected the stars. Sometimes it does select parts of the nebula. And if you'd like to deselect these, all you have to do is press Alt on your keyboard while clicking the lasso tool. So Alt and click and you draw around the selection and that deselects it from what's been selected. If you'd like to modify the selection you've made, I normally like to go into select, modify and expand. And I like to expand it by two as if the bigger stars haven't got the full circle around them selected, it can create nasty black halos. And then I normally like to come in to select, modify and feather, just to even out the selection slightly. I'm gonna zoom out again. And to minimize the stars, we come into filter, other, minimum. 1.8 is quite drastic for this. I'm gonna maybe do about one. You can click to see before and after, before and after, and that is quite a substantial difference to be honest. So I'm gonna click OK. And then to get rid of this selection, we can click select and deselect. And you can really see from that how much more of the veil, specifically the bit of the bat in the veil nebula that you can see so much more of in comparison to before. And we can check this by either going back in the history or clicking the eye on this layer, before and after, before and after. And as if by magic, that is how to edit the Veil Nebula. Thank you so, so much for tuning into this tutorial. I really, really hope you found it helpful. The Veil Nebula is one of my favorite targets to shoot in the summer, so I hope you enjoyed editing it just as much as I did shooting it. I'll see you all in the next one, but until then, clear skies.